sound of your glory moving once again upon the earth. The sound of the Spirit of God in a great awakening. The sound of righteousness and justice. Oh God, we worship and honor you today. We thank you for the United States of America. We stand in this moment, September 11th, got over 20 years later, and we don't forget. We thank you how you have stood with this nation. We thank you for your grace that is upon this nation. And Father, we thank you for every soldier that has defended this great country and our freedoms. We thank you, Father, for this land. And I'm asking you to heal our land. I'm asking you, God, to establish your justice. I'm asking that the new era shall raise up, God, a rest to your people. And I'm asking that your justice would bring evildoers to a place of justice and accountability. As you give our nation back to us again, I pray this day on September 11th. We love you and we honor you. And all the people said, Amen. 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 That was a really good amen. That was almost like you're really in agreement, right? That's right. (laughs) Well, how many of you got your, your rest and you came to this service because... Well, Brent, you want to say it? Why did they come to this Because they wanted to sleep in longer? They wanted to sleep in okay. longer. I just want to know. All right, so we did a quiz in the first service. All right, here's what our quiz is. How many of you, you go to sleep at like 7 o'clock in the evening? Any 7 o'clockers? There were some 7 o'clockers in the first service. Yeah, the first service. That's why they come to the 9 o'clock. Yeah. They go to bed at How many 8 o'clockers? <laughs> Only one? Man, you should have seen all the ones in the... There's a few. How many nine o'clockers? Ten o'clockers? Somewhere between... Eleven o'clockers? <laughs> Twelve o'clockers? One! Wow, see? This is, these are not all No wonder here. you come to the second service. You've been up all night. <laughs> awesome. so, how many of you game clockers are out here? Yeah. In other words, you stayed up... To watch a sporting event. Yeah. And I remember one time I did that recently, and... The game just stunk. And they and the team that I was watching played horrible. Really bad, really bad. And I stayed up thinking that they were gonna win, but I haven't really seen them win in like this particular team in like 20 some years. But I stayed up anyway, right, Brenda? You remember yeah, that game? I remember that game. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, recent. And it throws off your whole clock. Did y'all watch the same game uh, recently that I did? Okay, anyway. Yeah, I see some nods out there. You see some nods, but anyway. Oh, God. The food was good. The food was good. There you go. She made me ribs yesterday. Well, Hy-V Hi- made them, but that's okay. And Hy-V makes some great ribs, Brenda, by the way. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I want to do this. I want to greet those of you uh, that are watching. Maybe you are... Uh, like these people, they, they stay up all night. Yeah. I don't know if you can beat them or not. Or second they shift, stay up these guys. All, yeah. yeah, like Mylon said, second shift. You should see them. I said one o'clock and their hands went up. I said two o'clock and there were some that were still kind of getting their hands up. Well, I was getting ready to say three and four o'clock, you know, so anyway. <laughs> but listen, we're so honored that you joined us today. And I just got to tell you, we are preaching a strong word. Probably the last one in, in the series that we're, we're preaching, we're talking about honor today. We've been kind of talking a little bit more about the dishonorable side, but today we are going to talk about honor and really the benefits that come with being a person of honor. You are going to be so amazed at uh, what happens when we have a, a moral code, an honorable code. So good. It is so amazing from Scripture what God has promised to people of honor. And you're going to be blessed. I know you are. Amen. It's awesome. And the first one was so good. I think you're going to be blown away just by the amazing, amazing benefits connected. And I never associated some of the things we preach for years to honor. Really? So good. So good. So you're in for a real treat today. I would say I would put it in a book, but I've got three books 
Rachel, you know this coming out in the next year. It's just not, I don't need another one, Brenda. We'll so. see what happens. We'll see what happens. Know, so but it's anyway, a good we'll, word. We'll Are you excited for okay. God today? How many of you excited to be in God's house? Well, if you are, I think we ought to put those hands up. I want to welcome the chapel. And by the way, we need to welcome not only all the online audience on all the platforms, but OVTV. God bless you. Thank you for joining us from around the world. And I think in agreement, let's do this as we put our hands up. Let's say this. Say, Lord. Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's a good day. It's a good day. To be alive. To be alive. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. For this country. For this country. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this church, for this church, that I can gather, that I can gather in freedom, in freedom and in liberty. And in liberty now, Lord, now, Lord, I expect, I expect your, anointing your anointing to be in this room, to be in this room, and I'm going to be changed for the better. Come on, do you believe what you just said right now? All right, well then, shout! Come on, shout like you really believe it, and let's give God some praise. that you are bringing to this country and to the days, the weeks, and the months that shall follow. We thank you, Father, for a shifting of events and things that will release the tension, the harshness, and restore an honor and a rest to the people. We worship you and we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. What I want to do is what I did in the first service, but if you already were prayed for in the first service, I want to just give it to just those in this service now. But when it came time in the Bible to take the promised land, God gave a really strong instruction, and He said those that are 38 years and younger, they're the ones that are going to go in and take the land. It's not that God's excluding those of us that might be you know, older than 38. Because you qualify if you have a different spirit like Joshua and Caleb. Where when the ten melted the people's hearts and got them over into fear and being negative. Saying, oh no, there's too many giants. It was Joshua and Caleb who had a different spirit that said, you know what? These giants are bred for us. We're going to stand with what God has promised us. And we're going to see our our land be given to us and so you that are Joshua and Caleb you might be over 38 I release an anointing over you right now of a different spirit that shall see things the way God sees things and that you will have an anointing that will bring you into a place that even when you're 80 and beyond you will say surely God has given me my mountain and surely I have reached what heaven has promised me and I see the blessing of God upon my country and so, Lord, I release a fresh anointing upon them. I release a boldness upon them, a grace upon them to stand and to speak and to declare. And I release an anointing of wisdom that, Lord, they'll be able to guide and instruct in their leadership a younger generation. And they'll impart that same spirit that Joshua and Caleb has that rests upon them a different spirit. And I thank you. But if you are 38 years and younger and I didn't pray for you in the first service, I want you to go ahead and come on around and I want you to line up. Now, if I already prayed for you, you just stay where you're at in the first service. This is only, the, this is only 38 years and younger in this service. I want to pray for you. And I'm going to ask God to release a powerful anointing upon you of impartation to be part of the solution that is going to take back this country. Amen. Now I want you to know this, those of you that are coming up here that are 38 years and younger, over 20 years ago our nation was attacked. Some of you in this line, you, you weren't even born yet, so you have no idea what really happened. But our country was attacked. And there's many different theories, stories, scenarios of what people believed happened, but here's the bottom line. Our country hasn't been the same since. However, we have seen God be faithful to us. And when our country was attacked, our soldiers risked their lives, some lost their lives, so that you can experience freedom in this country. 
And I say that because as you're lined up and you're back there on the wall, never forget this younger generation. There is a push from hell and from those who speak for hell and cooperate with, with, with the devil that wants you to hate God, push God out, and tell you that somehow that there's something wrong with this country. And they want you to hate your country. And they want you to think that the only way that this country can ever have any kind of freedom is for the government to control everything. It's not true. It's we the people, you, that must stand up and say, no, true freedom comes from the people. Don't hate your country. I have traveled many countries. And there is no place like the United States of America. Amen? All right, I want you right now, let's begin to worship God. Father, I thank you for every person. Well, you can go ahead and be seated. Again, smile at somebody and say, you registered for the conference? <laughs> and encourage them to do so. That would be very good. So, And how'd you like that text to give? Isn't that pretty snazzy? You know, I was telling the, the first service, you know, where Matt said, you know, that I would, uh, I don't know how they do that, Matt. Do they just, you just record my voice and I call you. And I was thinking, you know, you, you never know who you might get. Might be, hello, this is Victor. And I'm calling to bring blessing to you in abundance. So lift up your hands and stretch for your faith as I bless you with the holy prayer. Right? You might get a, you might, you never know who you might get. Okay, I'm not going to do any more. I'm not going to do any more releases. So, but, uh, huh? I don't know. Huh? Well, hello there. This is, this is Don Knotts. I'm here to tell you I better get out of bed. If you don't get out of bed, it's not going to be a good day for you. <laughs> Oh, uh, yo, hey, wake up, yo, hey, you know, I mean, how you do, yo? <laughs> so I can do that. All right, hey, Wolfman Jack calling. <laughs> See, most of you don't even know who that one is, do you? You, you don't have any clue. <laughs> well, this is Ronald Reagan waking you up from heaven. <laughs> I, what was the question? <laughs> okay, anyway, never mind. We're done. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, Pastor Gene, if your wife is watching Terry, it's her birthday today. And uh, we wish you a very blessed birthday, Terry Bailey. We love you and we honor you. And uh, what a day, September 11th. You are such a patriot for America, but we love you and we honor you. Can't wait to see you this week. It'll be great. Last point. All right. I'm going to get to preaching with you because some of you are, I mean, you're here because of God, but you're also here because we have a volunteer meeting afterwards, right? So we, we got to kind of get to the point. Like we don't ever get to the point any other weeks. You, you kind of get that, right? So, so anyway, I want you to open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians, uh, I don't know, what is it? 1 Thessalonians 4, there you go. And I want to talk about the power of honor. You know, we've been kind of hitting it pretty hard the last few weeks, really focusing a lot on the dishonor side, but I want to really focus on the power of honor. And as you go to 1 Thessalonians 4, and those of you that are watching, uh, I want you to see something, and, and it's what I've been trying to convey to you. Everything in life, I don't care what it is, comes down to whether it is honor or dishonor, okay? Either people honor their parents and treat them with kindness or respect, or they're dishonorable. Either marriages are honorable, and the husband loves the wife, and the wife loves the husband, and their honor is not to, right, get into strife and discord or even divorce. I'm convinced that everything in life comes down to honor or dishonor. How you treat yourself is an issue of honor or dishonor. How you speak about yourself are either words of honor or dishonor. How you speak about other people is either honor or dishonor. How you give to God 
is either honorable or dishonorable. How many of you got that? Yeah. How we treat God is either honorable or dishonorable. And the reason is, as you're still probably turning over to 1 Thessalonians 4, because that's one of those books that's harder to find, is realize this, that the first sin, you know, people often say, well, the first sin that ever happened was, we know, with Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and people say, well, it was pride. Well, pride was part of the manifestation or it was part of the fruit of what happened uh, from something that was really the root. And the root of what caused that pride, that selfish ambition of Lucifer that really gets on people today was that he had dishonor in his heart. And that's why it says in Isaiah 14, uh, I won't, I'll just quote it, is it says, you know, Lucifer, how have you fallen? Well, we know how he fell. The Bible says he said in his heart, I will ascend above uh, the heights of the clouds. Uh, I will establish my own throne. I'll be seated in the congregation in the north. And those were all very prideful statements. But it was because there was something that he allowed in his heart and it was dishonor. And then you get into the Garden of Eden and you look at the first sin that happened among mankind. And you think about it. Yeah, people say, well, the sin was disobedience and so on and so forth. Well, again, that was the fruit. But the enemy is still today trying to get us to bite on the fruit of dishonor. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. God said to Adam and Eve, hey, of every tree in the garden, you can freely eat, man. You can eat of the watermelon tree. You know, back in those days, they grew on, they grew on, on, on trees. And, the, and, and you didn't have to worry about them hitting you and killing you because there's nobody that died. So I just want you to know your history and, and, and kind of how that was. But anyway, they, you know, they could eat of any tree that was out there. But don't you dare dishonor God. God said it. And eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day that you do that, the day that you dishonor, you'll die. And think about what happened. They ate of that fruit. They gave in to the dishonor of the dishonorable one, Lucifer, and they too now became dishonorable. And guess what it took? Because again, everything comes down to honor or dishonor. It took an honorable act, the greatest honorable act that has ever existed or been done in human history. Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man, no greater honor, no greater love than this, that he would come and do the most honorable thing, lay his life down, shed his innocent blood so that he could bring people, the creation of God, back to his Father where we could cry out, Abba, Father. God, we've been restored because of the honorable act of Jesus dying on the cross and shedding his blood. So, I mean, you know, everything comes down. You know, people, I was talking to Pastor Doug between the services and even people that, you know, choose not to get saved. It's because they dishonor the way of salvation. Some dishonor because they don't want to serve God on his terms. Some don't want to make Jesus Lord. They want the fire escape. And so it's dishonor that really is the root of what sends them to to hell, it's not that God doesn't love them, didn't love them. No, he gave one of the most honorable ways of ever giving man the opportunity to be reconnected to their heavenly father. It was through salvation. So I want to talk to you about this today. And I believe that there needs to be a movement of honor once again. You say, well, what is honor? Honor is a, is a, a, a moral code of conduct. It's being a person of purity. It's, it's a high moral standard. It's a, it's a code of honor of, that you speak the truth. You stand for the truth. You tell the truth. You want truth. It's integrity, honesty, treating yourself honorably. But more than that, treating others better than yourself. That was the golden rule of honor. Even the greatest two commandments that Jesus said in the book of Mark, he said, listen, there are two commandments, and really they're the Ten Commandments divided in two. Because you can take the Ten Commandments and divide it up into honoring God and then honoring others and how you treat people. And Jesus said, the greatest commandment of all is thou shalt love or honor the Lord thy God. Watch where it starts. With all your heart. Honor is of the heart. You're going to see that. All your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And he says, now I'm going to give you the second commandment. And he says, honor others 
as you do yourself. And this is what honor is. But I want to show you the powerful benefits that come when you live a life of honor. And I just want to say this last thing about this part. And then we're going to get into looking at the benefits of honor. Do you know that there is, in, De uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, if you look at verse 1, and it says this, it says, you know, it talks about the blessing. And it shall come to pass if you will diligently listen or honor the voice of the Lord and observe all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. So now look at what happens when you honor God. Look at what happens when you honor his word. Look at what happens when you honor the ways of God. Watch, keep reading. Verse 2. And it, this is what's going to happen. All these blessings, notice the blessings that come with honor. All these blessings shall come on you. And it's going to be so great when you live the moral code or the honor code of doing what's right, being a person of integrity. Come on. All these blessings are going to overtake you if you will honor the voice of the Lord thy God. And watch this. Blessed are you going to be in the city, man. You're going to be blessed in the field. You're going to be so blessed in the fruit of your body. You're going to be healthy. And even the fruit of your ground, your garden is not going to be eaten by a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> and even the fruit of your cattle. Come on, all you, you meat eaters. And the fruit of your cattle. Yeah, my beef's going to be uh, my steak. When I go to that restaurant, it's going to be perfect. And the increase of thy kind and the flocks of your sheep. Come on. Now, it goes on, and it talks about the blessing, and it ends in verse 12. Watch this. Watch verse 12. Because you've got to see the blessings of honor. And then what does it say in verse 12? If they'll put that up for me. Or actually, not. is it verse 12? Yeah. Watch this. The Lord shall open up his good treasure, the heavens to give rain unto the land in his season to bless you. And you shall lend unto many nations. Watch this. But you will not borrow. And those blessings continue on all the way to verse 14. So you got 14 verses that speak of the honor that comes, the blessings that come when you honor. But now watch verse 15. This is, this is interesting. And do you know for 54 verses are curses if you don't honor God or his word? There are more consequences for dishonor. It's dangerous. Dishonor is contagious. It's why our country is like it is. Because of the media and all their dishonor and their lies. They keep feeding and feeding. It's just breeding more and more dishonor. But you know what? The honorable people are recognizing it. And they're pushing back. And honor is contagious. In fact, so much that when Lucifer fell, it was contagious, his dishonor, that one-third of the angels fell. But think about the blessings of honor. Two-thirds... Two-thirds of the angels said, we ain't going that way of dishonor. Can you imagine in our country, two-thirds of us are saying, you know, we're not going the way of dishonor. We're going to go the way of honor. We're going to get our country back. Amen. Now, I want to show you this. This is very powerful. Look here at the importance of honor to God. What does God look for? I want you to go to John chapter 19 very quickly. And I want to show you where honor starts. Honor is of the heart. This is why in John 19, watch this. Honor is so important to God that he looks for it. God also recognizes dishonor, but he looks for the honorable. This is why in Genesis chapter 6, we all talk about the days of Noah, but people don't preach this part. The days of Noah, I mean, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Genesis 6 says there was evil, that they were continually bent on evil. Even their imagination was on evil. And it, and it, and it hurt God's heart, Genesis 6 says. Can you imagine hurting the heart of God? It hurt God so greatly that the Bible says that he turned around and he said he repented that he ever made man because of their wickedness. And then the Bible goes on and says, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Why did he find grace? Because Noah, the Bible says, was a preacher of righteousness in the book of Peter. He was an honorable man, Noah was. What about those days of Noah? In the middle of wickedness and corruption and evil and everybody doing it. 
A man stood for honor and got God's attention and saved the world because of honor. What's going to save our country? Honor. Honor God. Honor your constitution. Honor the church. But I'm going to show you that honor gets the Lord's attention. And it's not just you honoring him, but it's also honoring others and being honorable. Having that strong code of conduct, like a badge you wear. I stand for truth. I tell the truth. I'm a person of integrity. When I get pushed and shoved, I'm going to maintain an honorable life, an honorable response. When somebody wants to make me mad on Facebook, I'm going to maintain an honorable response. Most of our police officers in our country deal with either one or two situations. Honorable people keeping the law or dishonoring it, breaking the law. That's why we have law enforcement to maintain a code of honor. So we can all live peaceful. So when they tell you to defund the police, it's dishonorable. They want it when those people say defund the police because they want lawlessness, which is the fruit of dishonor. Are you listening? So let's look here at John 19. Think about it. Jesus is hanging on the cross. And there were two specific things that Jesus was thinking about on the cross. And when you look at John 19, you have to understand that the scripture tells us what Jesus was thinking. If you look at the messianic psalm of Psalm 22, and how many are familiar with Psalm 22 where it says in verse 16, they pierced my hands and my feet. It begins saying, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now that was David that felt forsaken of the Lord. And Jesus, who was saying on the cross, the literal translation, my God, my God, not why have you forsaken me, but for this reason I've been spared. This reason I've been kept to be the sacrifice for all mankind. Well, Pastor Hank, how can you say that? The scripture says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No, you keep reading. If you're going to use that as a messianic psalm and you're going to use that as a doctrinal basis to say, well, Jesus was forsaken, then keep reading in Psalm 22 because later on there it says, when I called unto you, you did not forsake me. You heard me. You need to get my book, My Heart Cries Abba. I explain all of it. But anyway, it's a different story. But you get into Psalm 22 when he says, when I called unto you, you didn't forsake me. And then he says, I was on the cross and I sang unto my brethren, the church. So here Jesus in the middle of his suffering is looking down and he's thinking about you and me. He's thinking about his church. He's going, God, they're doing this to me, but you're going to raise up a glorious church of people that are going to honor you, Father, and they're going to love you, and they're going to love one another. And this is how the whole world will know that, Lord, that they are, are, are followers of me and you, God, is that they love and honor one another, and for that reason I sing. And then all of a sudden... As he was taking his last few breaths and the pain and the suffering of a, of a mutilated body and, and muscle and organs hanging out of our blessed Messiah. He opened his eyes and he looked down and he saw honor. He looked down and he saw his mama. One of the most honorable things you can do is think about other people. But Jesus wouldn't say something unless there was a redemptive purpose for you. And the redemptive purpose was this. Come on, Ephesians 6. We've, we've taught it, those of us that are parents, to every child. Children, obey or honor your parents in the Lord. Why? So it's right, but it will be what? well with you. So Jesus in his plan of redemption wants it to be well with you or he is lying when he said in John 10, 10, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. I want it well with you, but the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He sowed an act of honor on the cross thinking of his mother honoring her and honoring his heavenly father that now it can be well with you. 
If you will honor him and honor others. And not only that, what else happens in Ephesians 6? When you honor your parents in the Lord, this is right. And it will be well with you that you what? May live long upon the earth. Come on, teenagers. Come on, young adults. You want to have it well with your life? You know why it's not well with you? Because you don't know how to honor your mom and dad. And you won't live long if you keep doing that. Jesus died at 33 years of age. Prematurely. He wants it to be well with you. He wants you to live long. And the very fact that he looked at his mother and thought of her and sowed honor and honored her and honored his father gives us all a redemptive right to sow into that same honor and receive it and have it well with our life, that life and life abundantly and to live long and strong upon this earth. It's also part of your Abrahamic covenant according to Genesis 15, 16. You'll go to your fathers in peace and you'll be buried in your graves in a good old age. Amen? Not in the jaws of death. Not losing your mind or have lost your mind. Now here's what's amazing to me. John 19, let's go back there. This is so powerful. Let's read what happened. I want you to see that, that honor gets God's attention. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by. Come on, this was John, the one who kept putting his head up on the breast and the heart of Jesus. When he saw his mother and he saw that honorable disciple, the only disciple, John, who didn't leave. And he said unto his mother, woman, behold, look, this is your son, John. And then he turned around in verse 27, and he looked at John, the most honorable disciple, the only one that didn't leave. It's like Pastor Brenda said to me, didn't Jesus say this? That, that if you gain the whole world and lose... Oh, he that seeks to save his life, thank you, Brenda, shall lose it. Every one of the other disciples sought to save their life, their reputation. They ran from Jesus because they didn't want to lose their life. He that seeks to save his life shall lose it. Every one of them were martyred. Like Matthew said, the only one that wasn't martyred, they tried, was John. They tried to boil him in hot oil, and it didn't kill him because of the oil of preservation. And and honor is what couldn't take him out. And he's the honorable disciple underneath the cross. And he says, think about this. This is what gets God's attention is honor. He looks for it. You know, I believe God's blessing this ministry. Yeah, we pray, we fast, we got, you know. Hank and Brenda have an honor code. God, I don't want to hurt your heart. I care about how you feel. I want to do what's right. I want to live honorably before you, privately, publicly, and I want to treat others honorably, God. That is my heart, and that is what I do and I will do. Are, are you here? Now, now listen. He looks for honor, and he looks at how you are honorable to other people. And this, so what does this represent with with him giving his mother to John and John to his mother? It represents honor has to be in your heart, number one. Matthew 15, look at verse 8. Jesus said it. He said, man, men all the time give me lip service. Okay, you know, the teenager, yeah, sure, I love you, mom. Yeah, uh uh-huh, but then why are you mean and nasty and ugly and you don't do what I say? Just because you're a teenager? It's like I told my kids. It doesn't say in the scripture, as soon as you get to be a teenager and a young adult, you have to be rebellious. It doesn't say that. Okay, it's a choice. And then my kids would say, yeah, but dad, everybody's doing it. Ah, that's the problem. Everybody was doing it in the days of Noah and they all died. But Noah wasn't. He was the only one that wasn't doing it. He lived, and you're going to live if you maintain honor. And so my kids would get scared when Brent and I would come back from a date. And I'd walk in the house. All right, show me the hole. What hole? The one that you put Jonathan's head in the wall, Matt. Show me that one. What are you talking about, Dad? I was at dinner, and I had a vision. And God showed me. True story. More than one time. Many times, Matt. But when you honor God, he speaks to you. Yeah. yeah. But I'm convinced of this. If you have an honorable husband who honors God and then is so honorable and loving and kind and considerate and sweet to his wife, 
And his wife reciprocates that, and she is together. They're submissive, and she's honorable. She's not Miss Jezebel. She, she is honorable. She makes a nice home. She makes an incredible, you know, home to be there. And together you work to have an honorable home. You will have an honorable marriage. You can have a dishonorable marriage and fight like cats and dogs, or you can have an honorable marriage. And if you have an honorable marriage, I believe, yeah, kids act up because they have their own human will. But ultimately, they will come back to the way of honor. That's what the scripture says. If the parents maintain a life of honor. Right? Even your dogs will be honorable. You know, I, I watch dog owners around the country, around, around my neighborhood. We got one, one lady that walks these three big dogs. And I got three German shepherds. And she's on a leash that's like 70 foot long. It wraps around her. And she's getting dragged down the street. And my dogs hate her. Not her, the dog. They hate her dogs. Because her dogs are very unruly. And my dogs aren't. I don't let them. And so I told her, I said, you know, it's one thing, you know, she's giving commands. And the dog's just like not even listening. And it's because that dog doesn't honor her. Just like teenagers, you can bark out commands, but if there's no honor from that kid, it's just commands. You've got to have, you gotta have respect. You've got to have a healthy fear. My dogs know if I look at them, they know exactly what dad's saying. They know exactly what dad's thinking, and they better listen. Three German shepherds, and they know what to do. And they have selective hearing, just like wives do. I just do something. You know, I'm only messing with you, Brenda. I love you, Brenda. I'm only messing with you. It's not true. Not true. Woo! So you're getting ready for the arena. So I'm training you for the arena. That's why I said that. All right. So number one, honors of the heart. Honor gets God's attention, how you treat other people. Number two, look at this one. In Mark chapter 15, I want you to see Jesus now is getting ready to, well, no, I showed you Matthew 15. Let's put that up. People draw near unto me with, their, with their, their mouths, lip service, but their heart is far from me. Notice honor has to be in your heart. It can't just be you act like it, you fake it. It has to be in your heart. I'm going to show you how you get honor in your heart. One way is you just, you, you love what God loves. You hate what God hates. You're concerned about his feelings. You, you're, you're consciously always aware of God. That's, that's the way I like to live my life. God, you're with me. You're in me. And, and you have to learn to, to yield to those feelings that when something doesn't feel right, okay, God, you don't like that. Okay, I won't do that. You know, the only reason why we're getting this extra land, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why we're getting this land and we're, we're, we bought this building is because I finally honored God. I didn't want to be here. I wanted my own. I wanted my own plan. And finally, it took the third time in me honoring God to finally get in line. And I like being obedient better than being disobedient. So, you know, just be more aware of what God uh, feels about something. And, and it'll help you in your moral code of, of conduct and how you act and how you treat people. Okay? Now, watch this. So, Jesus, he, he, he says his last words. He gives, after he gives his mother to John, John to his mother. He says, it is finished. And he gives up his spirit. What's going to happen to his body? They already dishonored it. They crucified it. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, they even made deep long their furrows, plowing on his back like a farmer in a field. And it says making deep long the furrows or the cuts in his precious, precious body. Jesus, thank you. And they dishonored his body. Now what's going to happen to it? Now that he's given up his spirit, what's going to happen to his body? It was important that his body didn't go into the hands of more dishonor. Look at Mark 15. Mark 15, look at this got God's attention. What does this represent? Number one, we talked about the heart and how you treat people. Mark 15 is very interesting. Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable man or an honorable counselor, or he was an honorable man, as one translation says, of the honorable counsel, which also waited for the kingdom of God and came in boldly politically and craved the body of Jesus. Notice he had such an honor and love for the body of Christ that it got God's attention. God the Father entrusted the body of Christ to an honorable man. 
You know how important the body of Christ is, the church, and how we treat one another, how we treat his pastors, how we treat the sheep, how we treat one another in the church. Come on, I watch people fight and argue night and day, day and night on social media, calling each other names on social media, arguing and fighting and being negative and mean and nasty. And the world could tell that we are not Christians because we're not in love. We are sitting, writing, and, 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 and being keyboard warriors. It is putrid. And yet, if Joseph, an honorable man, could be entrusted with the body of Christ, what does that say for how God views this church and how we are to treat one another? That's why there was no broken bones in Jesus' physical body, because he didn't want division. He doesn't want division. He wants unity. So, honors of the heart, honors how you treat one another, Mary and John. Second, honor to the body of Christ. Other fellow Christians, your church, come on, be honorable, serve in the church. If you love your church or you are an online person, you need to be giving to your church. Don't just say, well, that's my pastor, that's my church, and you give nothing. That's not honor. Are you listening? Number three, Acts chapter 10. Who did Jesus entrust his spirit to? Now, this is very, very important. Obviously, the day of Pentecost came and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came upon the 120 Jews in the upper room. But this is the first example of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit being entrusted to the Gentiles. And notice who it was. It's because God loves pasta. It was the Italians. I told the first service, you can call me Pasta Hank. I love lasagna and spaghetti and rigatoni and oh, I love all that pasta. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. <laughs> Mamma mia and everybody else. Look at verse 2. What about this man? He was an honorable man. Scripture here in King James calls it a devout man, which means he was an honorable man. And one that feared God. See, honor is contagious. You know why sometimes I think our houses are a mess? is because we don't have the code of honor in our home. Okay, my boys were not allowed, or are they allowed, to talk back to Brenda, let alone me. I still wear a cape. I'm still Captain Butt Kicker. I don't care if my son fights MMA or not. I am still Captain Dad Butt Kicker. Amen? And there is a code of honor. Right, Matt? Right, John? I know you're watching me, John. Come on, put amen down. There's a code of honor. Amen? We work hard to, to maintain honor in the house. But this man was an honorable man, and, and he feared God. He honored God and all of his house, and he gave alms. In other words, he was a giver. One of the most honorable things you can do is be a giver. You know, when people, they, they, they come into churches, well, you know, all that pastor wants is money. That's all they talk about is money, 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 money. Well, get a, get a life and get a clue. How do you think that the church exists without money, 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 money? I don't see you going into Brandeis. Well, I don't think Brandeis is existing. Well, I don't think you go into Dillard's and say, oh, this place, boo, boo, boo. And you start knocking over the, the clothing aisles and the women's shoes and, and, and the dresses. And, oh, your Dillard's is money, 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 money. Huh? You don't go into sports and do that when they tell you, a bottle of water and a hot dog. That'll be one hundred dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> money, 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 money. All you want is my money, 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 money. But it pays salaries, even for one that just got fired. I don't know if you heard, but anyway, that's a different subject. That's a rumor on the streets. Is that confirmed? Oh God. Anyway. But if, if you are a giver, you're like Cornelius the Italian. And do you know what happened? His honor, it released the supernatural. It released the Holy Spirit. Now, how does this apply today? You know what got me is when the user-friendly movement came, and all of a sudden, spirit-filled churches became perpendicular centers. I'm here, according to Ephesians 4, is to minister to the saints. You know what the problem is with some of these user-friendly preachers and churches today? 
I minister to the saints. They minister to the ain'ts. They minister to the ain'ts. Ain't no Holy Ghost here. Ain't no tongues here. Ain't nobody getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Ain't nobody ever seen anybody fall under the power. Ain't nobody getting healed. Ain't nobody getting delivered. Ain't nobody getting involved in talking about the political mess in the country. Ain't nothing happening. Because they dishonor the Holy Spirit. And you can tell it on their words. You have, to, you have to stand away, not because the preacher spits, but because there's so much dust that comes out of their mouth of the non-anointed to the ain'ts that you have to cover your eyes and cough because there's so much dust that's so dry. <coughs> now when the Spirit of God is there, there's going to be something in the atmosphere. <laughs> so who did he trust his spirit to? Come on, help me out, help me out, help me out. An honorable, somebody said Italian, yeah. The reason, I told you this, so I'll do this. So the reason why God chose an Italian is because Italians are very expressive. And so when he got filled with the Spirit, it was like, That's why it was an Italian. I'm an Italian, and I know. And I'm also Irish and German. But it, really, who cares? Those are just nationalities. I'm kingdom. Yeah, I'm kingdom. All right. Let me show you another example. No, I didn't mean to do it like that. Like, you know, like... Right, now, this, is, this is a nice message to me. The other ones were a little tough. This one's nicer. We're going we're gonna to go the, we're gonna tell to go the nicer route. I think, that's, I think that's better. I think it is. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get on in the scripture. I think it's terrific. I think it is. Okay, look at 3 John verse 1. Very quickly, I won't go into all that I said before, but I'll just go into this. So we often hear 3 John 2, I pray above all that you prosper, your soul prospers, and you're in good health. The problem is people don't read what why he was wishing this, why he was praying this. It had to do with honor. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius. This is an honorable man, John, whom I love this Gaius. I love you in the truth. You are such an honorable man. Watch this. Man, here's my prayer. You prosper. Your soul prospers. You're in good health. And let me tell you, honor will bring health to you. Honor will give you a healthy mind, will, and emotions. Honor will bring the blessing of God. I showed you that in Deuteronomy. But dishonor, will, will, that's why some folks are sick. That's why some people are never getting blessed because they, they don't honor God with the tithe. They don't honor God with their substance. They don't honor God, right? But notice verse 3. Look at the honor code that this man walked in. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren, other church members, came and told me, man, the honor or the truth that's in you, even as you walk in honor. All right, let's go to the next one. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. So how many ever quoted Proverbs chapter 3? I want to show you honor. And there are five ways between verses 1 through 11, and I'm going to show you the honor code, and then I'm going to show you the benefits of that honor code. And it's going to deal, number one, if you're taking notes, the first part is going to deal with the honor of honoring God in His Word and getting that Word in your heart. It's the reason why people get blessed is when you put God's word in you. Because this is the highest code of conduct of honor there is, is, is this Bible and doing what the Bible says, right? Which, by the way, thank God for how many of you honorable people that bring your Bibles. Show me you honorable people that bring your Bibles. Look at that. This is amazing. Keep doing it because, listen, it, when you show the devil and you show yourself and you show God that you really are taking a physical Bible and taking it outside... And you're walking down the street, putting in the car, carrying it in. You are saying something about honor. You are saying, I honor this word. And you're saying to this country, we will always honor God and his word. So always make sure you bring your Bible. If you are an online viewer, make sure that you're not just, you know, waiting for the scriptures to come up on the screen. And you're like the little sparrow. No, you get a Bible out too. If you, this is your church, you get a Bible out. All right, let's, let's honor God. So notice number one, my son, forget not my word. But where are you supposed to put that word? You're supposed to honor God's word and put it in your heart. Where does honor begin? Your heart. And how do you get more honor? God's word. God's ways. Knowing what God stands for. Knowing how to live according to the scriptures. Now watch what happens. 
If you will put honor in your heart through the word of God and you'll live a spiritual life, you're going to have length of days. You're going to actually add to your lifespan. And not only that, you're going to have long life. And guess what you're also going to have in this life? If you put God's uh, word in, in you, you're going to have peace. But think about what happens if you're just sitting there listening to, you know, CNN and, and all, yeah, fake news and all that other stuff. Drama news. Right? Soap operas and all that other stuff. You're, you're not going to have any peace because you're just watching a bunch of dishonor. You're listening to a bunch of dishonor. But when you put God's word in you, man, you're going to have honor. You're going to be a person of honor. You don't even have to think about it. Your actions will just snap right into honor. You'll just know, hey, man, this is not the right way to do it. You'll handle it according to the word of God. All right, let's go to the next one. So you have peace was the other one. Look at this one. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. All right, so how many know mercy and truth is part of the honor code? So don't forsake it. Don't be a person that's merciless. You never give any mercy to anybody, but yet you demand it for yourself. Don't be a liar. Come on, tax season. Come on, tell the truth. You know, IRS, it's really Satan. Also, it's becoming more and more, it's really socialism. But the bottom line is you have an honor to pay your taxes, and you should do it. Anyway. Bind them about your neck. Why should you put honor on your neck? Because this speaks of your lifestyle. You get honor by God's word in your heart. Now, this is how you wear it. So this is what you're supposed to wear. This is, the, the, this is what you wear. People will recognize it. You will literally have people recognize you, and they'll go, man, that's a person of honor or a boy. Like, stay away from that guy. Why do they tell you to stay away from him? Because there's something rooted in dishonor. He uses girls. Well, then stay away from him there, little hottie or whatever you want to call yourself, stay away from him. Amen. Right? Yes. Are you all here? Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm, try, I'm trying to be very honorable now. We're almost done. Pastor Doug, come up here because I know we got to get everybody out of here. Bind him about your neck. You know, your neck controls the movements of your body. This is also how you treat the church, how you treat others even in the church, how you treat the body. But it's also movement. It's what you wear. Okay? Don't ever get into being merciless. And don't ever get into lying. Why? Write them on your heart. In other words, know it. Know your code of conduct. Just like every police officer has a badge. They need to be reminded when they put that badge on. I'm here to serve and protect. I'm going to be honorable with everybody. And can I tell you, 99.9999999% really are. Thank you. Officers, you can buy me lunch. Now, watch verse 4. What happens when you wear honor? What happens when honor is part of, of your lifestyle? You will find favor and good understanding. So this is how you treat other people. If you treat other people right, you're merciful, you, you speak the truth, you stand for truth, you're going to find favor with them. All right, go to the next one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Watch this, verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge God. All right, stop right there, keep the verse up. Every single Time, honor God. I just told you, if you want to be a person of honor, you want to increase honor in your heart, make it your life that God is in you and I will do what he says and I will be cogn cognitant, cognitant, cogn whatever that big word is, cog whatever. You will just know how God feels about something because you are aware of him. I'm in constant communication, Lord, with that big word, cogn whatever. Yeah, you all said it. And, 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 and I'm aware of it, and so I choose to acknowledge him. Now, watch what happens. You get direction. He will, no, go back to verse 6. He will direct your paths. You know why some people don't have direction? Because it's all about what they want to do. They don't acknowledge God. They don't include God. They don't even want to hear what God has to say. Come on, I know, because it took me three times to buy this building. There's how I know. Look at verse 7. But God, I'm a good kid now because I listened. Thank you. I did. I did, Lord. I really did. I love you, Father. Be not wise in your own eyes. Now watch this. Here's the next honor code. So now you honor with the word. You honor with your lifestyle. You honor, what was the one I just said? Uh, whatever was the last one I just said. Oh, how you treat others. Honor by a moral code. It says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. In other words, have a moral standard. Look at something and go, that's wrong. That's evil. That's witchcraft. I ain't watching where a man takes his clothes off on a movie. I'm not watching where a woman does. 
Amen? And I'm not going to pay Hollywood money while they sexually exploit children and sit there and give and give and give and give. Somewhere we got to say, no, we're departing from evil. We don't want that trash. We don't want children's material and movies and things, Disney, that is full of exploitation of our children. That's why we need to do the honorable thing. Buy Captain Zepto stuff from Pastor Hank and Mutsby and Milo and now P.I. Gus. There you go. All right, come on, Pastor Doug. Now watch this. What will be the results if you have a moral code of conduct? You, you will walk. Pastor Doug, you got to honor me. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know I love you. Come here. Hey, no, come here. We know we don't. We got to get done. They got to get done. And this, you're my you're my reminder to get done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Watch this. It'll be health to your navel, marrow to your bones. You know what? Honor will cause health to be your portion. All right. Look at the last one. Amen. Honor God with your finances. Honor the Lord with your substance, and with the first fruits of your increase. In other words, learn to tithe. Watch what happens. Your barns will be filled with plenty. In other words, you're going to have plenty. High gas prices? Who cares? Fill it up, honey. And put the high octane stuff, 91. I don't get wigged out when I go to the, to the uh, gas prices. Well, Pastor, I read online you're worth $44 million. Keep prophesying, please. Somebody sent that to me the other day that my, my net worth is $44 million. I'm like... Wow, thank you, God. I, I really appreciate that. We'll, we'll pay cash for everything. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> okay, so your barns will be filled with plenty. You won't, you won't ever, you won't ever lack. And watch this, stand to your feet. And your presses, you want to be impressed? This? You want to be impressed? Your presses will burst out with new wine. You know what new wine is? It's a reference to the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 2. You want breakthrough? You want supernatural things to happen? Natural is the barns. Supernatural is the new wine. You're going to have natural blessings and supernatural if you honor God with your finances. Here ends today's message. Pastor Doug, take it away. Wrap it up and give their people their meeting. Bless you. Good Thank pastor you. At hand. See you at the arena. Love That's you. great truth. How many of you excited about honor? That's a great message, isn't it? So you can be seated for just a minute. And we have a couple announcements. Altar team, if you want to come up here quickly. And uh, if you have a prayer request today, our altar team will be up here for just a few minutes while we're kind of getting ready for the training meeting that's going to happen. And that we won't keep you long for that, but... Um, before I dismiss those of the rest of you that are here today and those that are watching online, uh, let's do one more thing. It's very important. Pastor talked about it. And that is the way that you honor God the most is when you accept Jesus Christ because that's the beginning of that relationship that we have with Him. That's where it all starts is when you make that decision to walk with Him and say, I'm going to turn my life, I'm going to humble myself, I'm going to repent of sin and go forward. And then you not only have a victorious life on this earth with him helping you get to your destiny, but it also will help you achieve your final destiny, which is being with him in heaven, and that's what you want. None of us want to go to hell. Amen? So... What I'm going to have you do, let's just bow our heads now. Is there anyone here today, and you say, Pastor Doug, I have never made that decision to follow Jesus. I've never really repented of my sin, humbled myself before God, and said, I want to walk with Jesus. And if that's you today, I'm just going to ask you to be bold. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you today if there's anyone here. Or maybe you say, I used to walk with God, but I turned my back on him, and I'm not really walking with God today, and I want to make it right I want to make the right decision. I want to move forward with honor. If that's you, don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You know, we never want to be embarrassed to make the right decision. That's something that we're happy, we're proud of. To do the right thing is the honorable thing. If that's you today, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Anyone here? One more chance. Anyone here that needs prayer for that? Okay, if you're watching online, you can do this at home. We're going to pray in agreement together and believe that God's going to 
invade our space and that we're going to make it right with him. I don't want anyone leaving without having that opportunity. Let's bow our heads and pray together. You repeat after me. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that he went to the cross. He died for me. He was buried and he rose on the third day. I believe that. I repent of any sin in my life. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Savior. And this day on September 11th, 2022, I will serve you forever. And I thank you for sending Jesus. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, you're in. You've started your walk with God. That's how you start. But then you keep continuing on with studying his word, praying, getting into a church or watching online, getting into fellowship, doing what you can to walk with him and, and stay on that path. And he will guide you, lead you to a victorious life. And then you can all be in heaven with him and we'll all rejoice together someday as we are with him forever. That's going to be a great thing. Amen? Amen. Okay, a couple announcements here. If you're coming for the meeting for volunteers, that's anyone that works in any area of ministry at the Opening the Heavens conference. If you are an usher, a greeter, an altar ministry worker, you're working in a book table, you're working in Promise Kids Children ministry, if you're working with the accounting department, whatever it might be, um, we want you to stay for that meeting today if you're already registered to do that. Okay, so we're going to be here just... In a couple minutes, we're going to dismiss everyone else. So that's important. If you're watching online and you're not here today, but yet you've volunteered for one of those areas, we have an alternate for you. You can be at the Mid-America Center at 3.30 on Thursday, the 15th. Meet us 3.30, Thursday the 15th. You'll need to come in the convention center doors at the arena. So that's the other option if you missed today's meeting and you're coming in from out of town. I think that's it for now. So I'm going to dismiss everyone that is not volunteering. You can leave at this point in time. If you need prayer, we'll take a couple minutes. You can come up and have prayer before you leave. And we'll have just a short, maybe 10-minute break. And we'll be right back with our meeting. If you need a restroom break, fine. One more thing I did forget to mention. This was it. The Connect Cafe is closed. And the Connect Shop is closed at this point because we're having this meeting. So... You'll have to go home to get your coffee. Sorry about that. We'll have it next time. Thank you for coming, and we'll be right with you here in just a few minutes to start our training meeting.